first off, um, I want to say shalom to everyone. And uh, we're going to show uh, things when it comes understanding of the times and where we are today. I think most people are getting things confused out there with all these different topics that they have, they have lost focus on the time, the time we're in. You noticed in the last days, um, there's a lot of pronosticators or or, or prophets or people talk about prophecy based on the apocalyptic time which we live in. Uh, we have uh, we have studies uh, from from a from a what you will call a university standpoint that speaks of Nostradamus. Okay. All right, and and. It goes into how he understood certain things according to the future. When he was looking in the black mirror, Nostradamus was dealing with Satan. So, we don't ascribe to Nostradamus. The Bible gives us the breakdown of the times. We don't need Nostradamus. And then, now the new spin is, uh, is what's going on with the so-called Mayan calendar. We're going to give some understanding on that. And the 2012 date, along with the the planet Nebiru understanding, we're going to give some understanding on some of those things to show you uh, how it's an actual diversion from the truth. It also gives our scientists, by them putting them things out there, it gives the scientists, which are sorcerers, a uh, lead way. To take your money and go into the stars and prepare for the, the last battle of Armageddon. They want you looking out there, but they're looking out there for something different. The planet Nubaru links directly to the spirit of the fallen angels. Okay, so those that are going into that philosophy and understanding need to be aware of what you're really walking into. Um... The fallen angels, when they fell, they wished to be worshipped as as planets, like your Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Mars, Nabiru. All these are gods that are worshipped by the elite. Okay, it have nothing to do with planets out there. It have everything to do with the worshiping of fallen angels. So the Lord tells us that we must be careful that we that we not involuntarily worship angels. And that's in the book of Colossians. Let's get that real quick. So we're going to give you understanding of the times according to the Bible and the Apocrypha so you don't have to question the times. On the, on the spiritual level, the brothers and sisters that did have that gift, or the tribe that had that gift out of the 12 tribes of Israel, the understanding of the time, were the Issacharites, in whom today we call the uh, Mexicans, like the Incans and the Mayans, like the Incas and the Mayans. Thank you. So they did have this understanding of history. They had the understanding of the times. And the, and the historians along with the scientists and the governments of this earth know this. They understand this. So we're in the last days, so they want to link, link the, the planet Nibiru to the secrets of the times that was in the Mayan calendar. We're going to show you what time it was, and we're going to show you that the Issacharites understood the times, but they were infiltrated by the same spirits that people go into dealing with the reptilians and the planet Nebiru. Absolutely. They started sacrificing their young and the other tribes 
to these same spirits, these fallen spirits. So they went off. And that was right before the European powers came over to the, uh, to the Americas. But they did, before that time, prior to that, had secrets of the times. Let's get the scripture on involuntary worship of angels first. Colossians 2.10. We're at Colossians, the second chapter, in the 18th verse. Read it. Colossians, chapter 2, verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a, in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. It says, in a voluntary humility. Colossians 2 and 18. That means you're voluntarily humbling yourself to entertain spirits or fallen angels. And it says, don't let any man beguile you. So they trick you through philosophy and religion, and they'll have you worshiping fallen angels. And this is prominent, especially on YouTube. You have David Icke going into the reptilians and the understanding of the reptilians and what they want and how, you know, and how they are running society today. That leads you into the New Age movement, worshiping fallen angels when everything is said and done. We don't have to go into reptilians. We know that the first reptile or the serpent who fell was, was Satan. We know the minions that followed him are Satans, are Satanists and demons. So why should I waste my time going into the who's reptilian? Yeah, George Bush is reptilian. Yeah, all of them, they're following Satan. So what? What they have to do with anything? We need to stick with the times and not deal in diversion. The Lord says, let, let no man what? Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility. In a voluntary humility and what? And worshiping of angels. And worshiping of angels. And worshiping of angels. Angel. So we have to watch out with all these things out there. Telling you to watch out for planet Nibiru and spirits going to come down and talk to mankind and all these, these different, it's madness. It's straight madness. The only times we are to focus on are the times according <coughs> to the Bible. That's it. Everything else is a diversion. Everything else out there is a diversion. Man can fail, but prophecies will never fail. That's the difference. Man can guess, man can, man can be wrong, but the prophecies are never wrong. So, let's show you what tribe had the understanding of the times. We're going to 1 Chronicles in the Old Testament. Twelve and thirty-two. First Chronicles. <coughs> Twelve and thirty-two. Read that. 1 Chronicles, chapter 12, verse 32. And of the children of Issachar. Of the children of Issachar. These would be your modern day Mexicans. These are your modern day Mexicans. Now how do we know it's talking about Mexicans or Issachar? Hold that and get Genesis the 49th chapter. And let's get the 14th verse. Genesis chapter 49 verse 14. Read it. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. It says Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. Two <coughs> burdens means work. They'll be, they'll be oppressed and worked. And when it says couch down between two burdens... If you ever seen those old symbols of south of the border, they had a man in the middle who's taking siesta with two asses or two donkeys next to him. That's what the scripture is talking about. The burdens of working like donkeys. 
The burden of work is on these people, Mexicans, or who the Bible called Issacharites. Now we know this is their prophecy because this is when Jacob told his sons what will befall them in the last days. And what will befall Issachar? Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. Two burdens means between two donkeys. What emblem is that? The emblem of the south of the border with the man between two donkeys. Mexicans. Read. Verse 15. And he saw that rest was good. He saw that rest is good. At noontime they have what? What they have at noontime? Siesta. At noontime. That's the rest of the Mexicans. This is Issachar here. Read. And that the land it was pleasant. And that the met and that the land was pleasant. Issachar live on very fertile land today. The land is pleasant there. The majority of produce and the majority of the things you eat in the United States, believe it or not, are tilled over in Mexico and brought over the borders. They're brought over the borders because the land is fertile, very fertile, rich land for the Mexicans. Okay? Read. And he saw that rest no. was good. Read it. And that the land it was it was pleasant. Read. And bowed his shoulder to bear. He bowed his shoulder to bear. Now listen to this clearly. Go ahead. And became a servant unto tribute. And became a servant unto tribute. <laughs> Mexicans will work for almost nothing. This is Bible prophecy and understanding of who they are in the last days. Again, we don't just focus on one tribe. The Issacharites have prophetic understanding out of this Bible. And it's when they all come together when we will have a complete nation. Everyone have a talent. Now the burden is on Issachar. The tribute is on Issachar. Right now. And, and, and the governments and the elites have orchestrated what we call racial tensions between the whites that are losing their jobs in America and the Mexicans who are just coming over the border to try to help their family in Mexico. <coughs> this is all orchestrated. When they did the NAFTA agreement and gave Mexico certain provisions where the industries can start over in Mexico opposed to staying in America stimulating the American economy. That was purpose. Then they stripped all the jobs away right after they gave jobs to the Mexicans that would come over and work for nothing so that everyone by default would blame the Mexicans. This was orchestrated. But going back to the topic, Issachar became a servant unto tribute. So they're in poor land. They got some of the rich land, richest land on earth. If they were able to take advantage of their own land, they wouldn't need America. But America have made them poor. And therefore, they become tributaries to the American New World Order. Okay? Now, let's go back to Chronicles, the 12th chapter and the 32nd verse. And read some of the gifts of Issachar. Read 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. How did David use the Issacharites in his army or in his kingdom. Read. First Chronicles chapter 12 verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time. They had understanding of what? Which were men that had understanding of the time. They had understanding of the times. So they, they understood prophetically what would happen in the earth. So that's the reason when they went over to South America, they was able to put this secret of the times in your Mayan pyramids. That's the understanding. The Most High gave them that understanding. But eventually, like every time our people get something, Satan comes in to try to take people down and use the gift the Most High give you for him. 
he tried to turn turn it around. So Issachar was able to map out the times, and mind you, when they looked at the times, it stopped at 2012, according to our so-called calendar in America, or or in the Western world calendar, or what you would call the Gregorian calendar. But what year are we are we really in? So we can't even go by that if we don't know what what year we're in according to the Bible. We're going to show that. We're going to show what year we're in. Also, the Mayan was able to map out the time that this world would have, that Satan would have to rule. But according to the Bible, even that time is cut short. So let, let me go into the times and give you some information on the times because Issachar understood the times. He put it in the Mayan calendars. And believe me, the New World government, the people that are controlling the, the Mayan pyramids, the, the, the anthropology and the archaeology that's, that, that's uh, related to that particular pyramid, they will not give you all the information. They'll only give you information that would benefit the agenda. They're not going to give you all the information. Because Issachar and the other tribes also had understanding on the fall of all the powers that are following, that are actually ruling in this earth today. They don't want to put that out there that the European powers are going to fall. Okay? That all the governments will fall. That was also stated in the pyramids. It was stated in the pyramids in Mayan. Uh, the Mayan pyramids, but the only thing they'll give you is 2012. So it's a race for time. The scientists, uh, the government powers, have looked at this information so that they can understand how much time they have to rule and also how much time they would need to deal with the extermination of the 12 tribes of Israel. But they'll never put that out to you. And this information, go to 2nd Edwards 13. And this information will give you, you'll have the understanding of the times. You'll know the times we're in. Okay? According to the Most High, according to the prophecies that were given in the Bible, in the Apocrypha. Okay? You'll also understand the changing of times. Who changed the times? We're going to show you. So, now if you noticed, you have pyramids and, and great constructs that were built in Egypt. In Egypt. Then, the children of Israel leaves Egypt. Right? They leave Egypt. Now, now that they're gone, for some reason, no new constructs or pyramids are erected in Egypt. No more pyramids. Now, this technology was beyond what man can think. But yet, Thousands of years later, after the pyramids were built, then new pyramids get constructed over in South America. With some of the same schematics as the ancient pyramids of Egypt. And someone, some people out there would like to think, okay, that's just coincidence. You have the children of Israel over in Egypt. You have pyramids. Then you have the children of Israel in the South Americas. And there's pyramids. How did they get there? Second Edges 13 and 39. This uh, this links to Second Kings the 17th chapter. I don't want to go all the way through it because we have to just hit little small points to get to the point. So we're not going to go into a long study on on each detail of how the 12 tribes got to America or the 10 tribes got to America. <laughs> 
But in the Apocrypha, 2nd Edris, the 13th chapter, it talks about a people that went over the waters into the new world. And these people are the children of Israel. So we're just going to touch on that. Then we're going to get back to the times. Go to 2nd Edris 13 and read 39 on down. 2nd Edris chapter 13 verse 39. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. Those are the ten tribes who were carried away prisoner out of their own land. Now when you read sec when you read Second Kings, the seventeenth chapter, it lets you know King Hosea, which was an Assyrian king. And today that would be the land of Syria. S-Y-R-I-A. The Syrian or Assyrian king took the children of Israel down. Took down what we would call the northern kingdom. Ephraim, which is today we would call the so-called Puerto Rican, was over the northern kingdom. Read. In the time of Hosea the king. In, in a time of who? Hosea the king. Hosea the king. Now what happened was the people were taken out of the northern kingdom and the Assyrians put Africans in the land and different tribes in the land instead of the people of the land. Instead of the children of Israel. That's why you have what we would call Falashian Jews today. Or Ethiopian Jews today. Read. Whom Solomon Ansar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. <coughs> And he carried them over the waters. And so came they into another land. So came they into a new land, read. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves. I need you to go back and read that again, the last part. Verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Whom Shalom and the king of Assyria led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, and they would leave that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. So they counseled the wise men of the ten tribes counsel among themselves that they would leave the occupation of the heathens. Heathens only mean Gentiles, non Israelites. So now they're leaving the Assyrians, read. And go forth into a further country. Go into a further country, read. Where never, never mankind dwelt. Where never mankind dwelt. So they were coming over to what we would call today the new world. Now we know that they are the first inhabitants of that land. Because the European powers and others thought that the world was flat. They thought that if you go but so far, the ships would fall off of the ends of the earth. Not that they weren't smart. They tried to send ships out there, and the ships never would return. So to them, they understood, if you send ships out there, they're not coming back. So they must be falling off the ends of the earth. That's what they thought. But the Most High called... Uh, uh, made the waters rumble, made storms, and made different types of disasters to stop other nations or heathen nations from getting over to the land before the promised people get over to the land. That land was promised to his people. So he used what you would call today natural disasters, natural disasters, and storms and hard waves to stop ships from coming over the waters. Read. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, and go into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So they went into a country where no mankind dwelt, which is the new world, Americas. Read. Verse 42. That they might there keep their statues, which they ne never kept in their own land. They will keep these statues in which they never kept in their own 
land. Now we understand uh, the archaeology and, and, and some of the uh, the old Hebrew Israelite rituals that are in the burial grounds of the North American Indians. Look at what the Mexicans wore in the past. Look at what the North American Indians wore in the past. The fringes. They were starting the customs that was given to their people at Mount Sinai. Read on. Verse 42. That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Go ahead. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. They went through the Euphrates, around into Africa. Read. Around Africa. Go ahead. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood. See that? He held still the flood. He stopped it from raining. He stopped the storms. He made sure the waters stayed calm the whole trip. Read. So they were passed over. Until they were passed over. He didn't let the other nations go over, but he let the children of Israel come over, which is Bible prophecy. And mind you, in the book that Ronald Sanders have called Lost Tribes in the Promised Lands, it tells us in this particular book, and this is a European that got this book, that, that wrote this book, a European Jewish man, mind you, that Christopher Columbus himself used what they called his D.I.L.E.s. It was written of in his, in, these D.I.L.E.s were his memoirs or his diary. And he had 2nd Edward, the 13th chapter, written in his diary to let the queen know that there was a fertile land and the people over there would, would, would serve her if they paid him to get to them. It was in the Dialis. He used these scriptures and say, listen, if you build me the right boats, I can get to them. There's people there. There's land there that's flowing with milk and honey. So the Catholic Church and all of them got together, the, Je the Jesuits and the Catholic Church, they constructed their finances to build the best boats so that they can conquer this new world that's written of in the scriptures. Read. Verse 45. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely, of a year and a half. And it took our brothers a one year and a half to travel on water to get to the Americas. And as they went, they were able to drop off tribes in each area. According to the people. According to the tribes. It was able to they would they went to, to, to what the land we call Cuba today. They dropped off uh, uh, what you would call Cubans. They went in all these different areas. They went to Puerto Rico and dropped off Ephraim. They went into the Americas and dropped off the North American Indians. North America and in Canada. That belonged to the North American Indians too. Over the borders, over the mountains was fertile land. They gave the Colombians, which are Asher. They gave fertile land to the Mexicans, which are Issachar, the seers of the times. The Most High gave them that gift. And while they were there, they built constructs of the times. Later on, they started falling to the same gods our people fell to in the past, and started paying tribute to the fallen angels. But before then, they originally came over to the Americas to serve the Most High. It's in the Apocrypha. The Catholic Church know this. They know this. And they'll tell you, well, don't look at the Apocrypha. It's not, it's, it's not spiritually inspired. It's not right. It's not real. Why? Because it, it identifies God's people and God's people's purpose. It also identifies them putting up a counterfeit to be Jesus Christ. Read on. Let's see what else the Issacharites and the ten tribes knew. Read. Verse 45. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. It took one year and a half. Go ahead. And the same region is called Osiris. It's called Osiris. Osiris means hidden land. That's what Osiris means. So the name of that country is not America. The name of that country 
uh, north of America is not Canada. Okay? The name of the country on the other side of the border, west, is not Mexico. All that is one land. You had the nations or the European powers, which are Edom, come over the land, come over and build borders and name the lands after their own names. That whole region, even the islands, are called Arzareth. Hidden land. It was hidden from the Gentiles. So they didn't discover anything. There was people already there. How can you discover something there's people there? Who are you discovering it for? If, if I'm already there, you're not discovering what you discovered the people to. So the Bible is infallible. The Apocrypha is infallible. You cannot dispute these facts. If you have to discover a land that people are already on, that means you came last. You ain't you haven't discovered anything. That land was promised to the ten tribes. You come over and start making borders and naming the lands after your own name, like it says in, in, in Psalms, the 49th chapter, to make everyone confused. When the whole land mass have one name, Isaac, that's it. It's not after America Vespucci, which was a European conqueror. <coughs> so the land is not America at all. It became tainted when the Gentiles went over there and started dividing the lands and destroying the lands. Okay? Read. Verse 46. Then dwelt they there until the latter time. And it says they will, the, the ten tribes will dwell there until the latter times. We're in the latter times now. So let's see what else the ten tribes knew that was over there. Now, mind you, the darker tribes didn't come over yet. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were still in the southern kingdom. The date on this particular move I'm reading here would be 721 B.C. where the Assyrian king took Israel down. Took the northern kingdom down. 721 B.C. Three years later, which is 718 B.C., they were able to come over the waters into the Americas, which took a year and a half, which which would put us around 716 BC, when when the ten tribes hit the new land. Around 716 BC. So we're talking about what? Almost 800 years before Christ was born. 700 years, 700 and some odd years before Christ was even born. Later, you had the Negro tribes, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, who fled Judea, ran into Africa in 70 AD, settled primarily on the western Ivory Coast, and we were brought over to the new land to meet our brothers, to serve what the Lord said we would serve in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. So now, the 12 tribes are together in one area now, primarily serving the Gentiles serving the other nations now we're here in the latter times and our time is coming our time is coming and now we're in these times the Gentile powers are planning a mass extermination of our people but let's see what the Indian tribes knew read Verse 46. Then dwelt, dwelt they there until the latter time. And now when they shall begin to come. And now when they shall begin to come. That means our people are waking, waking up. Our people are starting to get the understanding again. They will begin to come. That means his people will start waking up and start coming back over. Read. Verse 47. The highest shall stay the springs of the stream again. So when Christ returns, he's going to send the ships of Tarshish to grab the remnant in South America that will be left. Read. That they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. Go ahead. But those that be left behind of the people 
are they that are found within my borders. Those that will be left behind are those that are found within the Most High's borders. So there will be one safe place when everything is said and done. Now I went here to show you that the ten tribes understood that their captivity will soon come to an end in the latter days. That they would eventually come back over the waters as they went over into the new land. They understood this. And the Mayans mapped this history out in the pyramids. But they have confused people by changing the times. Go to Daniel 7 and 23. They have confused the world by manipulating time. Let's start at the 23rd verse. Read it. Daniel, chapter 7, verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. Talking about the Roman Empire. That's the fourth beast in, in Daniel. Read. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. It shall be diverse from all kingdoms of the earth. Go ahead. And shall, shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. And, and, those, and those three kings that were subdued is France, Great Britain, and Spain, the three that America is made out of today. Read. Verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. So the Roman Empire is the spirit that Satan is using to speak great things against the Most High. The Most High says, Worship. Remember, re remember the Sabbath which we're in right now and to keep it holy. Satan in a Roman Catholic Church would say, Remember Sunday and keep it holy. The Most High has give us clean animals in which we can live. And the Roman Catholic Church, with their buddy Satan, will tell you, it's okay to eat anything you want and do anything you want. Read. Verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. How, did you, how, did, how are they speaking great words against the Most High? They're making laws when all laws are contained in the Bible. That's how, can, that's how mankind can speak against the Most High. You will uphold and respect the law of the land, but you will disrespect the laws written of in the Bible you claim to uphold. That's backwards. How can you teach in church? Teach, that's, you know, follow the law of the land. That's ridiculous. Most time never said follow the Constitution. This is the Constitution. They're speaking against the Most High, making laws other than the Most High's laws to go against Him. Read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And you know what? Slavery can wear out some saints. The Roman Empire, the Roman Empire, the Roman Catholic Church, along with all the nations who conspired with them have wore out the saints of the Most High. And saints are not just any people. Psalms, the 50th chapter, the 5th and 6th verse, tell you the saints of the Most High are the children of Israel. They are the saints. Y'all know that song, When the Saints Come Marching In? I want to be in that number when the saints come marching in. Why, why do they need to be marching in? Because they were, they were spread all over the earth enslaved all over the earth so they're waiting to come to, to come marching in again in where their kingdom their land 
The saints are the children of Israel. And we are wore out in this society, in this earth, purposely. Read. And think to change times and laws. And they will think. That don't mean they will. They will think to change times and laws. What times? The times that the Most High showed Issachar. The times that the Most High showed Moses. The times when it comes to prophecies that our Lord and Savior Yeshua gave us. They shall think to change times and laws. If, if, if man was created according to the Bible, six, everything you see was made in six days and on the seventh day he rests. But yet, you want to bring in science and say we, that man evolved from a monkey 300 billion years ago. You're changing times. And then the calendar was working fine before the Romans got into power. See, and that's why we are magnifying the fourth beast, beast here. The Romans did so much. They did so much to, to actually dictate or to show uh how can I put this? They have influenced the future since the time they've been on the earth. They have influenced the future. No sooner as, as they got into power, they destroyed all the empires that had any level of spirituality and made them pagans. Then they was looking at the calendar and saying, well, the Hebrew calendars was, you know, we need to distort that. Let's destroy the Hebrew calendar. Now the Hebrew calendar was exact because it went lunar. It went with the moons to give you the exact times. You cannot get that wrong. You can't get that incorrect if you just stay with the moon. So they looked at the calendar and said, you know what? We need to distort the time so that people can think they're in an entirely different year. If they understand the times, then they will prepare according to the time. So let's come up with a calendar. Let's come up with the Julianne calendar. Oh, let's come up with the Gregorian calendar. When yet, every day has 12 hours, or well, every day have what you would call, excuse me, 24 hours. Usually it's 12 hours day, 12 hours night, but it's different depending on where you are geographically. Every day have 24 hours. Every day have a sun and every day have a moon. Now, the Bible says that the day started when the sun go down. Evening and morning was the first day. That ain't what the Roman Empire and Satan crony said. They get together and say, well, we're going to start the day at the witching hour, 12 midnight, when spirits dance in graves. That's their, that's their philosophy. That's their understanding. When they're doing all this witchcraft and evil at night, they claim it's a new day. They changed the times. Then they came up with the Gregorian calendar. They started coming up with calendars and adding years, like adding things that didn't uh, make any sense, like leap years. And just different things. Then they actually took time from the Bible. It made people think today they're in a year. They're not in. So you cannot believe anything that's publicized in the media. 2012, 2012, 2012, 2012. They program it. Then using some of the, these conspirators to get up on it. 2012, 2012. And then mind you, a year later, after they've been promoting 2012, they come out with a movie. 2012. Sounds like free advertisement to me. Got everybody looking at this 2012. Wake up. We're going to show you what year we're in. Right now, we're supposed to be in what date? It's, uh, what? August 12, 2010? That's what they say, right? 
when it says think to change times and laws first off a year do not start in the winter time it's a dead of winter cold outside and people are screaming happy new years confusing the animals are still hibernating they know better the new year start in the spring that's when the new year starts springtime so they change that have everyone dealing with the horoscope or the or the time of the Aquarius on which night hour January 1st happy new years and then they come around and tell you a few months later April's fool who's the fool you are because you celebrated new year in January think the change times and laws to throw off prophecy that's what they're doing here they know that in the, they knew in the last days that our people would be in this book trying to figure out what's going on in the earth a spirit is operating that's actually enlightening and 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 shaking our people to find the most high right now we're waking up in vast numbers so Satan had to put in a system to distort the times what time are we in I want to read this we and we'll, we'll be able to give you this document this document will also be in the book that that will soon be finished for the Academy and it's called what time is it the true timeline according to the Bible now mind you we came up with this particular document I did this document in 2001 I did this document and this will also be in the book. And just for a title, we says here, it says, December 31st, 1999. People all over the earth was waiting for 12 a.m. midnight to bring in the new millennium. Gala extravaganza, extravaganzas, millennium bug scares, and prophetic prognosticators prepared to bring in the year 2000 the day of our Lord but was it with this study you will see that evil powers of the earth have played a terrible hoax on the whole world now through the through the divine spirit Ahia and his son Yeshia you will understand beyond any shadow of a doubt the year 2000 according to the Bible was yet to come you will understand beyond any shadow of a doubt. Now in order to follow this study, you will need a complete King James Bible, including the Apocrypha. And this will break down the mysteries for you. Now I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm going to give you some secrets of the times. Go to 2nd Edges 14 and 1. Second Edges 14 and 1. Let's break down the time here. Start at the first verse. Second Edges, chapter 14, verse 1. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under a note, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me, and said, Ezra's, Ezra's. And I said, Here am I, Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me, And the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses. So the, so the Most High revealed himself. The Most High revealed himself to Moses. 
and spoke to Moses through the bush. He also did this to the prophet Ezra or Esdras. Esdras is the same prophet Ezra in your King James Version Bible. So he revealed himself, the Most High, in a burning bush to Ezra as he did Moses. Now, mind you, I'm going to make this clear and I can show this through scripture. The Most High never left the throne at any time. He don't have to. He's all in all. He's the mighty I Am. He used Christ before Christ was his actual physical self. He used Christ as his mouthpiece and mediator of the Old Testament. That's the spirit he sent to speak to Moses. That's the spirit he sent to speak to Edris. That's the spirit he, he sent to talk with Abraham. Christ always, he was always the mediator. Now, mind you, some people might say, well, how can you say that the Most High Christ's name is not a higher? Because he, he was not speaking for himself in the Old Testament. He didn't come as himself at that time. He came as a representative, a mediator to speak for the Most High. Now, so you don't get confused, let's prove that. First Corinthians 10. Oh, what you have in Edris, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Read it. First Corinthians 10. Start at the first verse. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. So Paul is speaking to the Israelites or the brothers in the church. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. He's talking about the fathers that went under the cloud that protected them by day and night. The cloud in whom this society would call UFOs. Okay, so this is telling you this is the signification of a people going through the Red Sea. Read it again. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Who are the people that passed through the sea? They were Israelites. First Corinthians, the 10th chapter. They were Israelites that passed through the Red Sea. Okay, go ahead. Verse 2. And were all baptized unto Moses, and the cloud, and in the sea. When it says baptized unto to Moses, they had to go through the water to receive life. They had to go through the water. When the Lord split that sea, that was like a baptism. Read. Verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? That spiritual meat is when the when the most high rained manna from heaven. That was the spiritual meat. Angels' food. Manna. Read. Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? And they drank the same spiritual drink when, when Moses split the rock and the water came out. Read. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. The spiritual rock that followed them. And who was that rock that followed them? Read. And that rock was Christ. That rock was who? And that rock was Christ. That rock was who? And that rock was Christ. That was Christ leading them. That was Christ protecting them. That was Christ that was feeding them. That was Christ that gave them drink. That was Christ 
the mediator working in the Old Testament. He never came to do his own will, but the will of the Father. The Most High never left the throne. So when he said, I am that I am, that was the Most High speaking through his Son. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, verse 3. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, and the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses, and talk with him, when my people served in Egypt. When my people served in Egypt. We served in Egypt. We're the same people that built this earth. Who else would you get, get to build this earth? It's no wonder on our dollar bill, you have the pyramid in the all-seeing eye. Why would you get any other people to build your society when no one did it better than building Egypt so they knew exactly the people that they were grabbing off of the shores they knew exactly who they were getting they knew how to make the Mexicans tribute to them because the Mexicans built pyramids so you can't tell me technology technology came when the Europeans came over the waters and these guys made pyramids I'm still waiting for the pyramids that was built in Europe where are they Show me the pyramids that were built by the European powers. So in order to build a society, they had to grab the same people that served in Egypt. Read. Verse 4. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt. And I led my people out of Egypt. The death angel that came down to strike the firstborn of the Egyptians. Yes, that was Christ. And the people that understood and believed put blood on their doors. So that the, the death angel could pass over. Or the spirit that Christ was bringing would, would pass over. Now you must put Christ on you spiritually. So that when death comes it'll pass over. It's the same thing. That was a symbolism of the Spirit. Read. Verse 4. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt. I sent them and, and led my people out of Egypt. These are physical people. These are not spiritual Israelites walking through the Red Sea. These are physical people. Read. And brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. And brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. Go ahead. And did what? Why I held him by me a long season. And told him many wondrous things. And showed him the secrets of the times. He showed Moses what? And showed him the secrets of the times. So not only do Issachar have the secret of the times. Moses was revealed the secrets of the times. He was showed the beginning and the end of the earth as we know it. Now there's some information out there. <laughs> Thank you. The things we have in the Bible are the things the Most High told Moses to publish. There's information in which the Most High told Moses to hide that shows the secrets of the times. I'm not going to go into those right now. Read. And, and the, the end. And, and the what? And the end. And commanded him, saying, These words shalt thou declare. He says, These words I give you, I need you to declare these words. Read. And these shalt thou hide. And other information, Moses, we need you to hide. We have read that information. We have read the information the Most High told Moses to hide. So he showed Moses all the empires that's in the earth and when they would fall and how they would fall. 
And this is the generation we're living in right now that's at the end of what the Most High showed Moses. We are living in that generation. He showed it to Esdras. And he gave Esdras a breakdown on time. And we're going to go over it. Read. Verse 5. Excuse me, verse 7. And now I say unto thee, that thou lay up in thy heart the signs that I have showed thee, and the dreams that thou hast seen, and the interpretations which thou hast heard. For thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth, and shall remain with my son, and with such as be like thee, until the times be ended. So he told Ezra, take all these things to heart, because soon you will pass, and be protected by my son, be with my son. See this? Read. Verse 10. For the world hath, hath lost his youth. At that time, he was telling Ezra, the world have lost its youth. The, earl, the world is getting old. At that time, it wasn't 100 billion years ago. This was 450 B.C., around mid-450, around between 430 and 450 B.C., the Most High is speaking to Ezra. Right here. He said the world have lost its youth. Read. For the world have lost his youth. And the times begin to wax old. And the times begin to wax old. He's talking about the times mankind as we know it. Have to rule. In this earth. Read. Verse 11, for the world is divided into 12 parts. The world is divided into 12 parts. Each part, brothers and sisters, is a thousand years. Each part is a thousand years. So let's divide this. We have 12 parts, which is 12,000 years, right? Let's work this out here to see exactly where we are reading in Ezra compared to where we are today. The world has lost its youth. The world is divided into 12 parts. The 12 parts is 12 parts in time. Notice the most time uh, uh, prominently used 12. 12 tribes the 12 stars represent the 12 women I mean uh, the, the the woman in revelations 12 I mean revelations uh excuse me 18 revelation 17 yeah excuse me. the 12 parts the 12 tribes the 12 disciples 12 separate parts Let's break it down. Read that again. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 9. Excuse me. Verse 11. Go ahead. For the world is divided into 12 parts. 12 parts, read. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. 10,000 years was gone already. Read. And half of a tenth part. And half of a tenth. So you have to go really up into half of a tenth. Because a year is not complete until it's already over. Okay? It's not complete until it's over. I'm going to break it down. Get Second Peter 3 and 8 and Hosea the 6th chapter in the first verse. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. One day with the Lord is one thousand years, read. And a thousand years as one day. And a thousand years is one day. Go to Hosea 6, 1 and 2.
Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Go ahead. Come, and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. After two days will he revive us. This is what he's telling Hosea right now. Two days is 2,000 years. So our people started waking up in vast numbers 2,000 years from the time Christ was crucified. Or, excuse me, from the time that Christ came into the earth himself. Read. And the third day he will raise us up. And in the third day, he will raise us up. Folks, we're in the third day now. We've been <coughs> raised as a people. And the government powers and the sorcerers and the witchcraft, uh, pronosticators, they cannot do nothing about it. We're waking up all over the earth now. Read. And shall live, and we shall live in his sight. We shall live in Christ's sight. First the awakening, and then the second coming. We're in the third day now but we're not in 2012 I'm going to prove that I mean 2010 I'm going to prove that we're not in 2010 but we are in the third day in which <coughs> we are beginning to become revived as a people we're getting the understanding that we're the actual people uh, we're <coughs> We're starting to get the understanding that the Jewish people <coughs> over in Israel, they don't even care if you if you know that. We're starting to realize that they are not the chosen people of God. They're not the children of Israel. They're Edomites. They don't care if you know already. We're starting to understand that we are the people who live in the curses written of in the Bible. That no other people can relate to the curses in the Bible but the children of Israel. That's a spiritual reviving going on. That no man can take credit for. Read. Go back to Ezra. The last thing you left off with. Second Ezra chapter 14 verse 12. And there remaineth that which is after the half of a tenth part. A half of a tenth part. Go ahead. Verse 13. Now let me show the, let me show the chart here. I'll show it there and I'll show it to, to y'all here too. Here's a chart. I don't know if you can see it here. Read that part again, so I can I can go 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 through it with them here. Second Ezra, chapter fourteen, verse eleven. <coughs> For the world is divided into twelve parts. The world is divided into twelve parts, which is each part is a thousand years, one thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years. 4,000 years, the fifth day, 5,000 years, and the day that Adam was made, 6,000 years. One day with the Lord is a thousand years. It took 6,000 years to make everything we see on the earth, including man. And on the seventh day was rest. No, there was no new creation after the sixth day. So it says it's broken down into ten parts. One during Ezra's time at a half a tenth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth. And a half of the tenth part is around 500 BC. Where well, you see Ezra right here. That's a half of a tenth part. 450 BC is when the Most High was talking to Ezra. Tell me that's not exact. That is exact. And then. 2,000 years
years later, two parts later, you would have what? You have 500 BC right here on the 10th part, which is 500 years from Christ, excuse me. Then you have Christ right here at the end of the 10th day. Yeshua was born. And then after that, 2,000 years, and we are starting to become revived as a people right here where it says kingdom. Kingdom. See that? Our people are rising as a kingdom. We're being revived like the Lord says in Hosea the 6th chapter. And no one can stop it. Their eugenics program can't stop it. Their wars cannot stop it. Their hatred cannot stop it. Their mass genocide they're planning against our people will not stop it. We're being revived. 12,000. So the earth, in actuality, is a little over 12,000 years. We're in the 13,000 year now. We're in the 13,000th year now. See, they can't distort time with us because we, we done went into every, we went into their calendar, we went into their research, and we know exactly what year we're in, and we can, we can match it with their calendar to let you know we're not in 2010. The year 2000 was a fake millennium. We was not in the year 2000 when they went into that, when they told everyone, uh, watch out, 2000 is coming. Everyone's scared. We got the we got the Y2K bug. It may be the end of the world. They purposely did a fake millennium so that people can fall away and think the Bible was not real. They shall think to change times and laws. So the Darwin's theory is garbage. The science they're dealing with is garbage. The, the archaeology they claim they're finding but not showing people is garbage. This earth is no million years old. It's old, but it's old according to the time man have to rule here. Before the real kingdom. Okay? Now, how do we know? How do we know what year we're in? Let's see. Get Harad the Great out of the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Idumean rulers of Palestine. Get Harad the Great. And I need you to get Harad the Great and give me the date it claimed Harad the, Harad the Great was born and what year he died. Read it. Idumean rulers of Palestine, 47 BC to 70 AD 79. Line started with Antipater whom Julius Caesar made pro procurator of Judea in 47 B.C. Herod the Great, first procurator of Galilee. So, here we got, we got Herod the Great, which is really one of the sons of Antipas, or Antipas, who was set up by Julius Caesar, Caesar to fake himself into being an Israelite. And they put him over the Sanhedrin, and they put him over the consuls, and made him a governor of Israel. He was an Edomite. Read. Then king of the Jews, 37 B.C. He became king of the Jews. Who set up as king of the Jews? The Romans. Who shall think to change times and laws. Go ahead. Then king of the Jews, 37 B.C. to 4 B.C. He was born 37 B.C. So that's almost 40 years before Christ. So when did he die? 4 B.C. Now, someone tell me, how can the guy that decree Christ be murdered 
from birth die in 4 BC? How can he die four years before Christ? Did that make any sense to you? It makes no sense. But it do make sense if you know that they changed the calendar. Oh. Now you can find this in the Zion of Fan Bible Dictionary. When we began to bring this information out, a little after year 2000, all the new Bible dictionaries outside of Zandavan change Horaz the Great's date of birth and date of death. Now check that out. They changed it purposely, but you can still get it in the Zandavan. They knew we was on to them. That they faked the millennium. We did a, we did a radio show 2002 and show how they faked the millennium. And right after that show, about a year later, all the new dictionaries for, for all your churches, they started switching the dates in it. To let you know, they claim they're not listening, but they're listening. So we found something out. How can they have Herod the Great die four years before Christ is even born? When he sent out the wise men to kill Christ. So when I seen this, a light bulb came on. I'm like, okay, we got him now. Because the dates that they put in their history books and in their biblical books correlate with their calendar. I'm, we got him. So that's four years off. But that's not, that's not the only thing they did. Let me show you. Let me get that paper back. Where's that paper in? Thank you. I need that. I'm going to show you how they did this. Go to Matthew, the second chapter. Matthew, the second chapter. And let's start at the first verse. Go ahead. St. Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Yeshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and Jerusalem with him, and all Jerusalem with him, excuse me. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded them, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Now how can Herod the Great de demand and ask the wise men where Christ will be born if he died four years before Christ came? Does it make sense? We go, We got him. Read. And they said unto him, And Bethlehem of Judea, for this is, for thus it is written by the prophets, And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the the wise men, inquired of them diligently. What time the star appeared? Now I'm going to tell you how wicked this guy was. Satan put him in charge so that he can be there at the time that Christ would be born. He put an Edomite over Judea. Knowing that this king would inquire to kill the Lord and Savior of mankind. And I thought the Romans was down with Christ. I thought they wanted Christ to come through. And you're gonna you're gonna ascribe you're gonna ascribe to a Roman Catholic religion in Christianity when they're responsible for putting somebody up to kill your Lord. Read. Verse seven. Excuse me, verse eight. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, 
Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I might come and worship him also. Go ahead. When they had heard the king, they now, departed. Now, now, I just want to show you this. I'm showing you Herod sending out the wise men to get Christ. Now, mind you, Christ was just born at this time. I'm going to give you the date in a moment. He was just born, but he could, he didn't know where he was. So he told the wise men, listen, you go out there, you know, go find the child. I know he's, he's in your prophecies, you know, because I want to worship him as a king too. I want to give him his tribute. And he was looking to cut Christ's throat. That's what he's looking to do. Kill him. Go to Matthew 2 and 11 and read the 11th and 12th verse. St. Matthew chapter 2 verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts and, and gold, and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned, warned of the Most High in a dream, that they should not return to Harad, they departed into their own country another way. So the Most High came to the wise men in a dream and told them, Do not bring this child to Harad. Harad is going to kill him. Right? Now, Christ is a newborn right here. Follow me. Read the 13th through the 15th verse. Verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Most High appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Flee where? Flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word. So he had to actually hide amongst the Egyptians. Three. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Because Herod was seeking to destroy this young child. Go ahead. Verse 14. When he arose... He took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was smoke, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Out of Egypt have I called my son. That was written of in the Old Testament, that he would call his son out of Egypt. Now, I'm examining this, and now I understand that Joseph was warned by an angel to go into Egypt and stay there until Herod actually dies. Right? So this is going to give us a time period now. Go to Matthew 2 and read the 16th verse. Verse 16. <clears throat> then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. So this guy, this tyrant, this evil tyrant, went on a genocide program and started slaying all the children two years old and back from the time he told the wise men to go find Christ. Now imagine what was what's going on with the mothers here. This criminal. He's killing all the man-child from two years back in hopes of killing the Savior, knowing that the Savior is going to bring an empire back to his people. Now check that out. But yet the Roman Catholic churches is telling you they're coming for Christ. They, they, they can't wait for Christ. Right? You ready? It says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that are in Bethlehem, and all of the coast thereof, from two years old and under, read, According to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. According to the time he diligently inquired of the wise men to go find Christ. So now, this is two years later now. So according to their calendar, right? We got 4 B.C., which is the death of Christ. I mean, with the death of Herod in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Right? You go two years back, that would be what? 6 B.C., according to their calendar. If you go two years back. 
But then you have to go 7 BC because Herod ended up dying a year later after this decree. So that's seven years taken away from our modern day Roman Gregorian calendar. That's not all. You have an extra year. Instead of going from 1 BC to 0, because it takes a year to get to 0, and then once Christ turned 1, that becomes 1 year AD, they went straight from 1 BC to 1 AD. Take it out another year. You are not in 2010. Go to Matthew 2, 19 through 22. St. Matthew, chapter 2, verse 19. But when Herod was dead, he died a year later after the decree. <clears throat> Read. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead which sought the ch young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Egypt. But when he had heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of the Most High in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. He turned aside in the parts of Galilee. Now when you go into Archelaus, which is the next Idumean ruler, one of the Idumean rulers, under Herod, after Herod the Great son, this is a year later after the decree, which shows us you got seven to eight years, which are which is taken from the Roman calendar we see today. Seven or eight, seven to eight years. So we're not really in 2010 at all. We're not in 2010 at all. Okay? Not at all. A matter of fact, when we so-called celebrated the millennium, we was actually in 1992, according to Christ's real birth, or 93, somewhere around that, that area, 92 or 93, seven to eight years. Check that out. So if you take that away from our time right now, we would be somewhere like in 2002 right now. So spring of 2002 was really when our people started to become revived as a people and started figuring out that they were Israelites on a, on a global scale. I'm not just talking about in the United States. Because we did a lot of work in the 90s, but nothing is compared to how our people are reviving now in the last days. It's not even in comparison. People, I'm, I'm, I'm getting email from all over the earth, different tribes understanding who they are, even outside of the of, of the uh, board of the 12 tribes we've listed. There's, there, we have tribes in Asia. We have tribes in different parts of Africa that we didn't even go into. People sending letters of, 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 of I'm getting mass letters of different tribes all over the earth. Okay, so to deal with the time, we're actually, believe it or not, in 2000, around 2002 or 2003. As of, as of this spring, because the new year start in the springtime. Now, what do, do that do to your 2012? Because the Mayans calendar was really linked in to the original calendar that's close to the Ethiopian calendar today. So now, we know we're not in 2010. Go to Matthew 24 and 22. Read it. St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 22. 
And except those days should be shortened. The Lord says, except those days should be shortened. And that's the time that, that Satan have the rule in this earth. Except he shortened Satan's time. Read. There should no flesh be saved. No one of us would be left. That's why Satan and his elitists have taken a liking or an interest into the Mayan calendar. So that they can know how much time they have to finish the children of Israel off all around the earth. But Christ got a plan for them. He's given them less time than what they see in the Mayan calendar. It's not that the Mayan calendar is incorrect. The Most High is going to shorten that time. Read. But for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. For the elect sake those days shall be short Christ also gave us another sign when he says no man know the day or the hour if no man knows the day or the hour we should not even be looking at the Mayan calendar for our salvation and understanding that's what the Satanists are looking at based on their time Christ is going to cut their time short. If the mind calendar was correct, then Christ would have been incorrect when he said, no man know of the day or the hour. Now, now Satan, the elitists, and the people that are beyond, behind this new world order, they're quaking in their boots because they don't know when it's going to happen. They know how much time they have according to the mind calendar. But they don't know when Christ is going to come and interrupt their time. But we understand the times by reading Matthews and reading the times that Christ told us. Earthquakes in diverse places. Nation against nation. That's being bred all around the earth. We know we're in the time. So they're trying to speed this thing up. They're trying to speed this thing up. And when, I'm going to tell you, they don't care if you think that they're the devil. They don't care if you think they're with Satan. They don't care at this point. They're going to pull everything that they gave the world back to themselves. And it's going to be a mass war all around the earth because they don't know how much time they have. They're scrambling for time. So this thing is about to hit. And it can almost happen any second now when it comes to their plan with the New World Order agenda into bringing forth the mark of the beast. But I'll go into that. Um, I'll go into that at another time because our time is up. But I wanted to show that we are not in 2010. So just take that 2012 thing off of the table because that Mayan calendar was matched with the old calendars. The Ethiopian calendars is the closest calendar that you can see today that links in with the Mayan calendar. That's the closest calendar you can get. We got a ways before 2012 according to our biblical time. But that time is going to be cut short. That's what they're racing against now. Alright? So I hope... Uh, hope you all got some understanding on the times and the fact that we're not in 2012 and that the times were showed to our, fa our, fo our, our family, so to speak, Ezra, Moses, Christ, our family. The times were showed to our family. The Issacharites had the understanding of the time until they turned over to Satan and started sacrificing to these fallen angels. All right. So I'm putting this out there again. Don't get caught up into these different philosophies that are out there on YouTube and all around the earth. Uh, speaking about um, planet Nubaru in 2012. And how can they give you any type of understanding when they don't even know the time? They'll leave you more confused than before you started looking at that stuff. All right. One other thing I want to touch on and then I can start answering some questions before we break down. One moment. <laughs> 